You've probably heard the phrase color science, like Brand X has great color science. To me, color science is an oxymoron. There's no science about color when it comes to cameras or displays. You either like the colors or you don't. You either want better colors in low light or bright light. Ultimately, the sensor can't give you both. The reason you like the colors or you don't is ultimately based on the manufacturer's subjective choice of essentially the stained glass they use to coat their sensors, the trade-offs they make. It isn't color science. More accurate terms would be color opinion or color aesthetic or best color to acuity trade-offs for the buyers of our devices. You might remember the stuff you learned in high school about how light is a spectrum and has wavelengths. Well, all that stuff has nothing to do with how cameras or displays work. Nothing. I mean, it can explain how they work, it can measure the physical properties of this or that, but it has nothing to do with the ca how the cameras will work with color in the real world. Let's look at the fundamentals of camera sensors. This is a Lumix uh, GF3. It's the same basic designs uh, and materials found in all digital cameras, from a cheap cell phone to the latest Nikon Z whatever to a $100 million satellite. They're all based on silicon, and they only sense the brightness of light, only brightness. They don't see color. Color is inferred later on. Color is inferred by placing color filters over each photodiode of the sensor. See, like this red filter, or it might be a green filter, or a bluish filter. The sensor knows nothing about the color filter. The stained glass they sit behind, nothing. The sensor only detects the strength of light. What filters do is block some colors of light, which let the other ones through. So, this red filter is blocking most light except the red. That doesn't mean other light isn't coming through, only that most of it is red. Same for the green or blue filter. It's far, far, far from perfect. All light gets through to the pixel, green and blue and all and in between. It's only through statistical calculations that the camera's electronics will produce a value of how much red it believes, well, in a sense, of the light that reached the pixel on the sensor. The manufacturer must work through the trade-offs. If the filters are too thick, the color will be more accurate, but the camera will struggle in low light. If the filters are too thin, the camera will be sharp in low light, but will have weak colors. Different materials will respond differently to different types of light. All have serious limitations. So please, I'm not arguing that science isn't important in designing sensors. Only that, at the end of the day, the manufacturer must make a subjective decision on the trade-offs. Once manufactured, sensors cannot be changed. Okay, what happens next? The engineers of the camera makers and display makers work together to produce a technology where the sensors that record the brightness of red, green, and blue can display them back to you in a pleasing way. Obviously, there's no use having a camera if you can't display the image, and there's no use having a display if you don't have a digital image to work with. How do viewing screen engineers display the colors the cameras record? Using the same trick that camera engineers use to detect colors. They do it through filters, again, like stained glass you see in a cathedral. Or they do it by putting electricity through a chemical that will glow either red, green, or blue. Again, putting aside some technologies like Fovian sensors, all pixels either record red, green, or blue, or they display red, green, or blue, which are eyes, brain, combined into a full color. Obviously, both camera and display manufacturers want the colors consistent between cameras and displays, but it's very difficult in the real world. First, as I pointed out, each manufacturer makes trade-offs it believes customers want. Second, different manufacturing processes have limits in what they can do or not do. So every time I hear the phrase color science, I chuckle a bit. What's science? It's all subjective. Canon science is nothing more than a subjective preference for reddish images. Sony's for yellowish, Nikon's for cool. And for all we know, there's no difference in the sensors from all brands. They just tweak the colors differently when they save the data. If you know, tell me in the comments, what is perfect color science? What would that be? What would it look like? We all have 
we all have different responses to color. A nice red to me might not be a, a nice red to you. And again, the materials used to work with color are crude and limited. The filters on the cameras are chosen subjectively. The filters on your display or single color emitting diodes on your display are chosen subjectively. No one cares what the science says about this wavelength or that. The only thing that matters is you, what you like. The filters on the camera sensors are designed to work with the filters on your display to produce pleasing colors. No one cares if a wavelength is missing here or there. A general effort is made to keep the nuances of light intensity at the expense of color fidelity, a long subject. What I want you to get out of this video is that color is not only subjective in our everyday life, it's subjective to the cameras and displays you work with. Naturally, cameras and displays want to capture or display every color you can discern, but you can only do it using single color glasses or compounds. Cameras and displays do not work in wavelengths. Again, we can measure the wavelength of a single source of light, but we cannot capture millions of wavelengths using high resolution sensors or display them using high resolution screens. When you're working with raw sensor data, you're working with brightness values associated with subjectively chosen red, green, or blue filters. How you associate colors with those levels of brightness is up to you. There's no color until you choose it, and what you choose may not be displayed on the user's screen the way you want it. Again, there are no values of color recorded by your camera. There are only brightness values of light you can associate with the color of the filter placed over the sensor. Everything is chosen to give you the most pleasing images using the least amount of data. I'll get to that in another video. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks.